Welcome back to Infinity Drones. Today we're going to take a look at how to convert or basically put an O3 air unit into your brand new Chimera 7 Pro V2 frame. So if you've just bought the frame, you already know that they would give you a nice MIPI cable that's quite nice and long and the heatsink and obviously your adapter SMA cables there as well. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so you have your O3 unit and you're going to remove it from the packaging and then you can notice that obviously it's already nicely packaged, everything's already there, but this little cable is too short. So we will need to replace this cable with a nice one that they would provide you from iFlight. So there's a few things we can do. The first thing obviously we could remove this little sticker, go somewhere else. And you're going to see this is the bottom of the unit and this is the top of the unit. Now, when we are going to put the heat sink on, this heat sink is actually going to go onto the top plate. So this little DJI plate will get removed and this section will get screwed onto that one as well. So let's get started. Always be sure to put your screws in a place where you can easily find them. As you can see, here comes the gunk off. And the MIPI cable comes off. Great stuff. So, first things first, let's remove the MIPI cable. There we go, it just pops off. I'd like to have this one go to the camera and then this one with an edge coming out of the unit itself. Actually, as you guys can see, the one that goes to the air unit is actually much bigger. My apologies. So the big one goes to the air unit. Okay, so once you've popped this on again, you can now put the cover back on and it's quite simple. All you need to do is just switch it over and then make sure that you put your little clip, this little clip, back onto your air unit. Remember, the air unit, this little thing goes over and then supports the, the pressure onto the actual unit. So just gonna turn it around, clips on. You can see little edges goes to the side so it pressures it pushes the whole thing down i'm not sure if you guys can see clearly but once you've got it in there then the whole thing just presses the whole thing down there we go just like that take a look nice and easy you can put your heatsink back on again so just slip it over Pop it up, it'll slot in quite nicely. Make sure it fits in nice, there we go. And then you get your AXA adapter and you're gonna flip it over and put it on the side. Just make sure it slips nice and easy over your MIPI cable, you don't wanna damage that. As you guys can see over there, there we go. And then get your screws and just tighten it up again. Okay. Just so I'm gonna forward this little checks in quickly. Now the next bit you're going to do is you're going to jump over the camera side. In the camera side, room, you've got your MIPI cable this side now. So I've already removed the two screws from my camera. So you can just pull the whole thing off. And there is your little MIPI cable. You can do the exact same thing on the, like you did on the other side. I like to just get from the one side and just lift it off and it pops off. 
there's your camera, you can put it down now. Now, when you take a look at this, you'll see there's some glue on the inside, which of you guys can see over there. Inside, that's holding it. And on the other side, there's a little rubber grommet over there. So what I do is I get a little tweezer. Just keep it up with my tweezer. So I get a tweezer and I pull the little rubber grommet out. And once you've pulled the little rubber grommet out, there we go, you can see, put on down. You can look straight through. And I'm not sure if you guys can see all the way through, but you can see the glue on the one side. So don't be, don't pull on the MIPI cable, you can damage it. So what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to push that glue out. So it pops the glue on the inside out because that is an issue. You can't, can't get it. So I've pushed it all the way through. Be careful that you don't damage your cable, but you're gonna have to remove that glue or gunk so that you are able. You can see there, I've just popped it loose. And now I'm gonna remove the glue from my cable. And I'm gonna remove from there as well. So that means you can get the whole cable all the way out. The light's quite bad. Let's see if I can get the gunk out of there. There we go. Where's my tweezer? Okay. So now I've got that out, I can now take the cable and pull it all the way through. But you can push it through. I like to pull it up and then bend it like that. So it can easily put through the hole. And it's also going to make you understand why your cable is the way that it is. Because it needs to go through that little hole at a 90 degree angle. There we go. Okay. Now, you can see there's a little stick a thing on top you can remove that piece of double so you can put some double tie tape but i'm going to keep that and i'm going to cable aside so what i'm going to do now is i am going to take a look at my new cable as you guys can see over there and i'm going to put the glue i'm going to push it through my camera hole first so there we go stick it through and the iFlight one's actually quite thick so it's quite you're going to have to bend it slightly to get through There we go, all the way through, and that camera housing can sit all the way down. And then you get your camera all the way through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this little sticker back on again, just to have some pressure. If the glue sticks, if it doesn't stick, it's fine. It doesn't seem like it's going to stick, so it's not the end of the world. Oh, there we go, it's on. And now I can go to my camera and I can click it back in there again. As simple as that. There we go. Now we are going to pull this wire all the way up again. And you can see there's a little rubber thing in the back of the camera there. It's going to fit. I'm going to make sure that my camera is pointing the correct side. You can see a little pink um, glue at the top there as well. So I'm going to slip this over. Oh, I'll pop the cable off. Now remember, with the original one, when you had it on, you'll have noticed that it clipped in quite nicely, but the cable was bent underneath, like, like that. Can you see? There we go. Like folded underneath the camera housing. If you need more length, then you can probably see if you can MacGyver it a little bit. But in this case, I'm going to move the cable all the way up into my casing so that I can get the cable all the way in. Quite of a tricky situation you got here. Pull the cable through. I think the best thing to do is, is to fold this in. Maybe like that, so it overlaps. goes all the way camera housing goes over it's 
してくれね。Quite tricky to get this all the way in there. Actually, I don't want to put too much pressure in there so it pops off again. So, this cable is actually quite difficult to get on. But once you've got it lined up, you should be able to get your screws in. There we go. As you guys can see, there I've got it finally lined up. It's not as easy as it looks. Okay, one down, one more to go. Okay, there you go. You've now just replaced the cable, all you need to do is just add your little rubber grommet, it goes facing downwards, just stick it in there, and the cable should just pop into the middle. That just holds it, obviously it prevents moisture from anything going in there, and there you go. Stick it in there. There we go. You've just replaced the cable with a nice long 20 centimeter cable.